Hello, hello, Sif Alchemist here. Today is an Arcana reading for one of my clients, but I was not uh, given consent to disclose the name, so it's order number 181. Let's start with the first question. Who's your guardian demon? I'm going to use this beautiful deck. Let's get right to it. It's a Sohramon. Sularan. And your guardian demon is Asmodei. Some call it Asmodeus. The one and only Asmodeus is your guardian demon. And I want to show you the bottom of the deck, by the way, here. We have another powerful guardian demon, Botis. Just want to show you the figure here as well. So you're connected to actually two guardian demons because Botis wanted to show up too, that's why I'm, I'm showing it here. You have Asmodeus and Botis. This is truly powerful. Your guardian demons are um, helping you protect yourself, become who you truly are, embrace your darkness, understand the mysteries of the universe, manifest abundance in your life, you can literally um, invoke Asmodeus and for anything that you want, to manifest anything that you want, especially when it's connected to spirit, to the unknown, to the underworld, something that has to do with the paranormal, with the supernatural, use Asmodeus. And for Botis, you can invoke Botis and ask him for anything that has to do with the physical reality, with occult knowledge and wisdom, alchemy, finding the mysterious answers, the hidden answers about the mysteries of the universe, about magic, and about how to make the right choices in your life. It's a very powerful, straightforward energy for you. Asmodeus here can also help you with repelling negative energies or the evil eye or banishing entities that are not good for you, that are trying to harm you. So anything that's negative that in the spiritual realm, Asmodeus can help you with that. Removing evil eye, uh, banishing some entities that are in your home that you don't need and similar things. Let's move on to the next question. And the next question is, what's the origin of your soul? Akros ifeselerech zindras mik shurek ikrames ifachen all right. Very interesting here. Cards. Let me show you what came up here. We have Shax. It's another powerful guardian demon. Buer, another powerful guardian demon. And here we have uh, Andre Alfus. So you're very connected to the realm of darkness and demons. Um, I'm hearing here your, the origin of your soul is with these entities. It's with, it's with guardian demons. Your first reincarnation was as a demon. But I need to clarify for you here and for the viewers, what is the meaning of a guardian demon or a demon in general? This is not... Um, from a religious perspective. This is not something that comes from Christianity or that, uh, a religious dogma that says that demons are bad. In the beginning, demons were the same as angels. Angels and demons were the same entities. They are powerful beings, some call them deities, some call them gods, and they were working for the same boss or the same god. And then at some point, something happened, a clash happened between them, they separated and they started a war with each other. Judaism came later on and said, oh, we're going to give them two different names. We're going to call one angels and the other demons, but we're going to call the demons as bad. We're going to label them as bad. And that accentuated with Christianity. That's all there is to it. So demons are powerful deities, just as much as angels. But your soul's origin is from the group of what they label as demons. It doesn't mean that it has a negative connotation. It doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. It just means that you're part of the group that people label as demons. And they are very powerful. 
we can't even imagine their capabilities. They're masters of magic, they know the secrets of the universe, and they can literally manifest things from thin air. They understand creation from a higher perspective, from a higher level. So your soul originates from there. And here we have like Shax, we have Buer, are some of the entities that you're actually familiar with back in those days when you were also one of the demons or one of these higher entities you were one of them and you knew them too that's why they're showing up here you knew them and you're familiar with them so when you hear these names or when you hear at least the energies that come with these names because names have been changed for thousands of years because of translations because of different languages and different cultures and the translations sometimes change the names but the energy that's carried within the name the moment you hear it the moment you feel it you know it it's familiar to you it's not something that you're scared of because most people who are not connected to these energies they get scared why because they're programmed because they're like oh religion said that i should be scared of this and they become scared for you not at all you know that these entities they're not as bad as they have been depicted. You know that they're extremely powerful, just as much as angels. And if anything, angels, there's a lot of angels that are bad, that also do bad things. And for you, you're connected to these demons, and you were one of them. But in this lifetime, you're reincarnated as a human being instead of one of them. But they are protecting you, they are guiding you, and they're making sure that... Um, you're always on the right path for whatever mission you have in this lifetime. And let's move on to the third question. What are your gifts and abilities? So, Khresh Isetan Zuntas Mik Elereket Ton Kharreskif Sarosh Imechen. Interesting, very interesting. So, here, let's see. Your gifts and abilities are highly, highly connected to magic, to the dark arts of magic, to rituals. The first thing that came up to me here when I saw these cards is magic and rituals. Alchemy is part of it, astrology is part of it, these are dogmas that you need to learn for yourself, that you need to do some in-depth research about alchemy, about astrology. I share a lot about alchemy, you can check that out. But for you, it's the dark arts of magic. It's rituals. It's rituals for banishing, for exorcising. It's rituals for casting spells or manifestation. You're meant to become a mage. And because it's highly related to your gifts and abilities. Now, this is what I'm saying, it might resonate with you or not, but that's the message that you need to hear right now. You're the kind of person who will find it very easy to cast a spell compared to, other, to another person. You're the kind of person who will find it very easy to do a ritual for protection, or a ritual for unhexing, or even a ritual for hexing. You can do it very easily compared to other people because that's the source of your power. Your power is dark, it has tremendous energy, and it can be used for the benefit of humanity. You can use it to protect other people. You can use it like, for example, if someone is having a bad entity lingering around in their home, you can banish that entity. You have that power through rituals, through dark arts of magic, casting spells, using symbols and sigils as well, and just studying magic. And you can also create your own magic because you have that power as well, because it's the source of your energy, the source of who you are, can allow you to create your own magic. You don't need to read it in a book and just regurgitate it and copy-paste it. You can create your own thing. You can create your own spell, your own ritual, and it will work, because your energy is incredibly powerful, and it's even transmitting in the way I'm talking as well because I'm always just channeling the energy of the person. So you have this powerful energy and you can create your own magic. But the magic is dark. It's beautiful. It's not negative. Dark as in not a negative connotation. 
dark as in like it can help other people, help other people get justice, help other people get rid of bad things from their lives, remove the evil eye and uh, remove bad entities as well, or malicious, harmful uh, uh, spirits that are trying to harm other people. You can do all of that. So that's your gift, that's your ability. You have to work with it, you have it. It's not something I hear, it's not something that you need to work on awakening. It's already within you, you have it. You just have to start practicing. That's what I heard, you have to start practicing. The moment you start practicing, it's gonna work wonders. And that's the answer to the third question. And your occult or alchemical sigil is this one. It's a very interesting one. It's a very powerful one. Um, it came to me specifically for you. This in alchemy it has two meanings. This one in alchemy represents sulfur or the soul. Sulfur is that energy that defines us, that makes us who you are. It's the soul that's within you, that drives you, that pushes you to accomplish your dreams, that pushes you to make wonders happen in your life. It's the divine masculine energy and it's what makes up your soul. And this is the sigil for that in alchemy and it is your sigil. But it has two ways to be drawn. It's either this or this. So both of them mean sulfur or the soul or that energy. In Latin, it's called the anima or animus. It's the anima, it's that energy that we can't define, but it makes each one of us who we are. It's what in English people label as the soul, your soul, that thing that's within you that pushes you to be who you are, pushes you to do something, pushes you to accomplish something, that drive the anima. But in the alchemical term, it's sulfur, because in alchemy, each element, each substance, has a physical representation and the spiritual representation. So the physical representation of this is sulfur. That's just a physical representation of it. But the spiritual representation of it is the anima, is the soul. So this is your sigil. It can be drawn like this way or this way, but this is also called the Leviathan cross. Some people use it as the Leviathan cross, but it is the sulfur, it is the soul, in alchemy, it's the anima or the animus. And this is the perfect representation of your energy. Draw this sigil, use it in your rituals, use it in your practices every single day, have it in your altar. It's easy to draw or you can print it out and meditate on it because it's gonna help you accomplish and get to the places you need to be. It's gonna help you become who you truly are, awaken, that true side of you that makes you who you are and become it. Not just what you were told to be, but what who you're supposed to be. So the sigil can help you with that. It's a powerful sigil. You can use either or, either this one or this one. Feel free to use either or, but it is the sigil for you. All right, and this is what I have for you. I hope this helps. Thank you very much for considering me for this reading. And for the rest of you, if you want your own Arcana reading, you can find it at sefalchemist.com. Thank you very much.